We're really excited to actually meet these guys because I've been buying on them. They offered us some Peruvian corn. Papas a la huancaina. This is the avocado one. Good morning, guys. So it's day 41 of our lockdown here in Cusco, Peru. And the lockdown has been extended for another two weeks, which didn't come as a surprise at all. But we weren't hit too hard by it. <laughs> we are pretty much used to it being this way, and we know that this is just how it's gonna be for a little while. So we're adapting to life in Peru for now, and we're just living day to day like this. So guys, something pretty cool happened. We were on this news site. If you're from Peru, you might know of it. It's called Diario Correo, and they wrote about our experience on there. Our experience here in Cusco and in Peru being locked down here. If you want to check that out, I'll link it below. Uh, pretty cool read. Hey, what do you want, Tater? Huh? <laughs> what, do you, what do you want? So you guys have been telling us that we should make papas huancaina. So we're gonna go out really quick and we're gonna try to find the ingredients for it. All right, we got it. Huancaina sauce. We can't make it on our own because we don't have a blender. This makes it a lot easier. Hey look, I think it's our friend down here. He always finds us, no matter where we go. He followed us home the last few days. VR face. <laughs> So we just ran into a guy who recognized us from our YouTube videos. It's from Florida, has been here for several years. So we just met Jeremy on the street here and he's seen our videos. And Amy back here. To give a testimonial that these guys are really portraying very honestly what it's like here. And uh, really enjoying their, their show. So yeah. We're fellow expats living in Cusco too. So. Yeah. We're really excited to actually meet these guys because I've been <laughs> Spying on them in their channel. <laughs> Every time I go out, I look. <laughs> and you recognize Mr. Potato yeah, Head, right? <laughs> so that's awesome. Hey, Potato. waiting for. We are finally gonna try our homemade popsicles or paletas. I have a mango one. And then I have a maracuya granadilla. Let's give them a try. See if our work was good. So we put it in these plastic cups with a little stick here and then I was putting a little piece of toilet paper over it to protect it from the freezer environment on the top. And then they get kind of stuck in here so you gotta kind of Twist the top a little bit and then warm it up with your hands. And then squeeze it up. There it is, a perfect paleta. Cheers to Cusco. You're treating us well. Here we go. Wow, that's really good. It's so milky. That heavy whipping cream we used in there for all of these, it just makes it this milky creaminess. There's some grenadilla pieces. You gotta crunch them up. All right, I'm sure this is gonna be delicious. It reminds me of peaches and cream, but it's with mango. Mm. Perfect. If you've been watching our videos, you've probably seen this view 15 times. But some of you have said to show this view a little more because it's so great. So here is our view from our Airbnb.
really quick, I want to thank all the new patrons, everybody who's joined Patreon this week, and I'm going to put you guys right here. Thank you. You guys are awesome for donating out of the kindness of your heart uh, for postcards, which we're going to send out just as soon as we can after lockdown. Also, thank you to all the PayPalers. Some people are donating on PayPal, and you guys are also right here. Thank you very much, and if you guys also want to support the channel, get a postcard, get a souvenir from around the world, check out the link below to Patreon. So we're on our third popsicle of the day. It's safe to say we're addicted to these. This is the avocado one. You guys wanted to know how it was. I already took a bite, but I'll take another one. And I'm gonna give you my honest review. It's not as good as it could be. I've had avocado ice cream before, and it was a lot sweeter. I think next time I would add more sugar to this. And this one here is kiwi mango. Same answer as Lindsay. This one actually could be sweeter, so maybe next time we'll add a little bit of sugar to some of these. Yeah, I added sugar to this one. Yeah, to the avocado only. But I think that just goes to show when you eat popsicles that are like store-bought, they probably have so much sugar in there. Because mm -hmm. I feel like I put a lot of sugar in this one, but I can barely even taste it, so no. it's interesting. Cheers. <laughs> By the way, what is cheers in Peru? Salud. It might be, but it might change from country to country in South America. We're not sure. Well, we'll see if I'm right. Peru might have their own version. Or maybe in Quechua, if you know that. So you'll never believe this, guys. So tomorrow is Sunday, and on Sundays, nobody is allowed to go out during this lockdown at all for anything. So we just stocked up on food. We got everything we needed for basically the weekend. We thought we were all set to go. <laughs> and then I went to make some tea. <laughs> And the flame was going, and then all of a sudden, five minutes go by, and I'm like, wait a minute, I <laughs> Why don't hear any water boiling. Why is it taking so long? Sure enough, our gas is completely out, so we can't cook. So we contacted our host on Airbnb. She said that she was leaving, and it'll take one moment. That and was an hour and a half ago. So one moment <laughs> equals an hour or more, I guess. To the Peruvians here... What does one moment mean? <laughs> <laughs> We're still trying to figure that out here. For us, typically it means like, you know, a minute or two. <laughs> but in South America, I don't think it does. <laughs> we need the gas to be able to cook. <laughs> to live through the weekend. Otherwise we'll be eating popsicles <laughs> for every meal and snack. <laughs> we just got a bunch of eggs at the market. 30 eggs. So we have about 35 eggs in all. And I guess we could microwave them. Hopefully, one moment doesn't mean a day or two. Alright guys, so right after we recorded that, they came. So I'd say an hour and a half was one moment. So we know now. <laughs> so he brought a huge new gas tank and he fixed it. But also, our light bulb burnt out in our bathroom. So we haven't had light in our bathroom since we got here. And he said he's not going to be able to fix it. He said none of the hardware stores are open. So we're out of luck. <laughs> so our bathroom, which has like no light in it at all, like it has a tiny little sliver of a window, which light doesn't really get through. So we have to bring our phone in or my computer in while we're in there to try to get some light in order to do, you know, bathroom things. And that's our life. <laughs> that's lockdown life. View this morning. Get some coffee. Good morning, guys, from Cusco, Peru, where we always are. This morning, we're gonna talk about our plans after lockdown and where we're gonna go next year. We're gonna be dreaming of all the future travels, and Mr. Potato Head is gonna brainstorm with us. <laughs> or not. Alright, so we're coming together and we're writing down some places that we want to go. This is a mixture of where I want to go and where Lindsay wants to go. So we're talking about where we're gonna travel once this lockdown is over outside of South America. Where do you guys think we should travel? What would you be interested in seeing videos from? We have quite the list here. <laughs> so let me just name a few that are on the top of the list for 
both Lindsay and me. Iceland, Morocco, Egypt, Turkey, Chile, Bolivia, Ecuador, if we don't make it this time. Philippines, Cambodia, Laos, Armenia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and those are just a few <laughs> from the list here. So leave a comment below, where do you think would be interesting for us besides your hometown? <laughs> And if you guys actually live in any of these countries, then let us know. Maybe we can meet up when we get there. So a lot is going to depend on this coronavirus and lockdown situation, but we're hoping next year that we're going to be able to get to maybe 20 of these countries. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so that you see all of that, because we're going to start traveling as soon as we can. I wish we could have lunch on that table with them. Look at this view. Can't get over this view. So we just came down to our yard to have some chips and guac, a little bit of pisco and pear, some wine, and then our neighbor came out, our neighbor from Turkey, and he offered us some Peruvian corn. Look at that. Look how big and plump Peruvian corn is. You can't tell that each kernel is what, like five times the size bigger. of a fingernail? <laughs> yeah. And the ones. <laughs> it is. Here, it's a fingernail. Wow. Compared to the ones at home where it's like maybe one kernel is like your baby tooth. It's hard to really compare the taste because with American corn, I usually have butter and salt on it, but this doesn't really need it, but it could probably make it taste better if it did. This seems a little more chewy instead of crunchy. <laughs> no Peruvian corn? Huh? Just eating some Peruvian corn with potato head. Hey! So today we're making the Peruvian dish called Papas a la Huacaina. Hopefully you guys aren't disappointed in us because we're not actually making the sauce. We we're using <laughs> we're using this packet. So half the job is already done. <laughs> but look at the taste and we'll try one of the main Peruvian dishes. Hopefully we'll make it right one day or at least we'll have someone make it for us. So this dish looks really good. It's made with potato slices and this huancaena sauce, which is uh, kind of a spicy yellow creamy sauce, supposedly, and then some eggs and lettuce pieces. So we're gonna make kind of our own version of it because we don't have everything exactly how we're supposed to, but it should be pretty close. There's a lot of black dirt on our potatoes. So you boil yellow potatoes and then you have to hard boil some eggs. And then you're supposed to put them over leaves of lettuce, but this is the closest that we have. Okay, so this is our lettuce on the bottom. And now let's put the pumice on. And because these Airbnbs don't come with that much stuff, we only have one pot and one pan. So now we have to boil the eggs after. We're halfway done with the meal already. Papas a la huancaina. And then, <laughs> I don't know what this is. And then is. there's mine. This is Lindsay's. I don't know what happened to the eggs. <laughs> this is Alex's. <laughs> And then, of course, as Lindsay does, she's gonna ruin it. Of course, it's not gonna ruin it because it's. It's well only done. gonna enhance it. Oh! Okay, let's give this a try. Alright, here we go. We're gonna try this famous Peruvian dish. I'm excited. This sauce seems really delicious. Yeah. Alright, get a little bit of everything in there some sauce, potato, and egg. Mmm. 
I like that sauce. Yeah, that sauce is amazing. Wow. We've been missing out all this time. Wow. And I can only imagine if this sauce was homemade, if we actually made it instead of out of the package. Mm. It's probably so good. Thanks for the recommendation, guys. I really like it. Yeah. Definitely going to get this once we get out of lockdown and we can have someone actually make it at a restaurant mm -hmm. and make it right. This is good. Favorite Peruvian dish so far. Now we're going to go watch some Lost. So, buenas noches. Buenas noches. Okay, guys, now it's time for coffee and Q&A. First question is... <laughs> I'm not a table. But you are a mesa. First question is from Juan Reyes. He says, with all due respect, <clears throat> who has gained more weight on lockdown? I think I'm maintaining weight. We don't have a scale to know for sure, but I don't feel like I'm getting any bigger. And I actually should be gaining weight. So I was in India a few months ago and I got a parasite while I was there and due to that I lost a ton of weight, maybe 30 pounds. So I've been trying to gain weight lately. So hopefully it's me. I think you have gained a little bit, in yeah. a good way. Alright, this next one is from Dan Lockhart. Alexander, you're from California and I think Lindsay's from the Midwest. Were you urban people or country folk in your lives before? So I lived in the country basically my whole life, a very small town, takes like 10 to 15 minutes to get to any stores, lots of farms around. My backyard is literally like all trees and in the woods. And then I'm from Minnesota. And that's right, I'm from California, a little bit outside of San Francisco. Most people wouldn't have heard of the place where I'm from, it's a smaller place. So, you know, being from near San Francisco, I would say, <laughs> I'm very close to being a city boy, but I was born outside of it. So it's kind of hard to explain, but I guess I'm in the suburbs in California, in the Bay Area, and but very close to big cities too. Alright, this next question is directed at Lindsay. Lindsay, as a nurse, how do you feel about this pandemic, and do you have any message for other nurses and doctors around the world? Hard question. Yeah. Big question. Big question. So first of all, I'm really thankful to all the healthcare workers right now. They are really putting themselves at risk to save lives. And quite a few of my friends are nurses and I know it's been quite a stressful time for them right now. So if you know anyone in the healthcare field, make sure you thank them. They're doing a lot for us right now. So thank you again to all the healthcare workers out there and I hope that you're staying safe. All right, the next one we have is from Harold Snye. He said, if you stay in Cusco longer due to the quarantine, would you guys remain where you are or move to a different area of the city? We really like where we are. We're kind of right near the historic center of Cusco, which I think is the best part. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really good reason to stay here. Another good reason is that transportation isn't really a huge thing right now. So if we're going to get all of our luggage together and try to move to another area of the city, it's just not going to be that easy. So we'll probably stay around here. I mean, look at this view. <laughs> All right, the next one we have is from Nalita Rubio. She says, will you two sweethearts get married after all this? You seem to be managing really well together. <laughs> we are managing very well. <laughs> <laughs> Long silence. We are managing really well together. The only thing is we haven't been together that long yet. No, it's been like, um, what, four months? Yeah, probably about four months. So we're still a pretty new couple. Uh, so... Time will tell. Next one is from Julia Steele. She says, what will happen to Mr. Potato Head when you are able to leave? So we've been getting this question a ton, <laughs> all the time. And so we're just gonna give a quick answer right now, which is we're probably gonna start a GoFundMe or something similar to help him out. We're not gonna leave him out on the streets. We're figuring it out. And very soon, probably in the next video or two, we're gonna give you guys an update and really try to come together to figure out what's going to be best for him. All right, our last question here today is from Violet. She says, I know you guys have only been together about three months, so is there anything significant you've learned about each other? <laughs> Good question. We've learned a lot about each other being on lockdown together. Mm. So two of the main things I've learned about Alex is 
When we eat, he cannot eat his food without watching something. He literally <laughs> will have to find something on his laptop and load it before he will touch his food and I'll be like totally done eating by the time he touches his. <laughs> and if Lindsay gets up in the middle of our meal and I'm still eating and I have to pause the show or the movie, I won't eat for that whole 10 or 15 <laughs> minutes while she's doing whatever she's doing because I need to eat while I'm watching. So I've tried to be better about not interrupting the show so that he can eat. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And the other thing I've learned about him is he cannot start his day until he's had a cup of coffee. He is addicted to coffee. And for Lindsay, one thing is her phone is always on red. Literally, her phone always the has like... 5% or 2% on it. I don't know how it's humanly possible. Like when mine gets to red, it's gonna turn off in a second. But literally every time I look at it, it's on red all day, every day. And I don't know how, it's, it's I crazy. always have to charge my phone. It's the same thing at home too. But she doesn't just charge it. Like I, I charge mine during the night and I have it ready to go. She doesn't charge it. She leaves it on red all day. It's the little things that we like, the little things that we notice like that. The other thing, let me bring my phone out for this. Mm, this ought to be good. So Lindsay talks in her sleep, but she, it's not like a whisper. It's like she will talk out loud as loud as she can or she'll laugh and do things like that. So recently I started a little list, <laughs> notes on my phone called things Lindsay says in her sleep and does. <laughs> I forgot. It's not just what she says. Um, <laughs> so in the last few months, she said many things, but I didn't write them down. So it's hard to remember what they were. But the other night, in the middle of the night, middle of the night, complete silence, she says, I think 75 is my top. No idea what I was talking about there. And then the next, the next night, I wake up to her kicking me backwards with both feet. So she kicked backwards and kicked my shins with both legs. And then I asked her why. She said she was dreaming, and in her dream, she was rollerblading, and she had to jump over a snake. <laughs> and it was so funny because he woke up and I actually hurt his shins. She kicked backwards with both feet right into me, like like jumping over a snake with rollerblades. And Alex is a really light sleeper, so he probably wakes up every time I do something weird like that. I would wake if she was whispering, but she just like blurts out. Um, I think that concludes our Q&A. Yeah. If you want your question answered in the next Q&A, just write Q&A and write your question in the comments below and we will try to get to it. Please like this video. It really helps us out. Leave a comment or a question below and we will see you in the next video. Do you want postcards from around the world? Right now I am writing and drawing on postcards to my subscribers. If you want to join my Patreon, click the link below. You'll be supporting the channel and you'll be getting something pretty cool with a drawing from me. Hey, thanks for making it all the way through this video. If you want to watch more, click one of these videos. Subscribe because I'm traveling all around the world and I'm sharing the whole thing with you. Thanks.